JavaScript is one of the fastest growing software languages uh, and has become the standard for most public facing client side rendered applications and front end development. Uh, and a lot of that is due to being able to leverage the NPM ecosystem and its wealth of open source libraries uh, to be able to immediately bring in uh, reusable functionality and start developing. When most of the code base that's brought into your application is open source, this poses a major challenge to software development organizations, large and small. Uh, so today we're going to be unveiling a few tools for the NPM ecosystem that will allow you to better manage and procure dependencies. Sonatype has always been the authoritative source on the quality of these components. In this case, we're bringing the security data to the fingertips of the developer when they're researching what components to use in NPMJS. Uh, in addition, they would be able to see uh, remediation information as it maps to company policy. Uh, and in this case, the recommended version to upgrade to is uh, version 341 of jQuery. For now, though, I'm going to install the vulnerable 321 version of jQuery, and then that's going to add it to the package JSON and the package log JSON. While that's going, uh, the first thing I want to point out here is the VS Code plugin, uh, which is what you see on the bottom left there under Sonatype Scan Results. This is going to give you a list of the installed NPM packages within VS Code and kind of gives you the same remediation information that we saw within the uh, Chrome extension earlier. However, I'm not going to pay attention to any of that, and I'm going to carelessly push up my changes uh, to the master branch of the repo without even running any tests. From there, I'm going to go ahead and do what I should have done prior to pushing my commit and run my test script. Uh, this test script is going to go through all of my unit tests as well as call our second developer-facing integration, AuditJS. AuditJS is an NPM package uh, that is available on NPMJS, which means it can be installed globally as a dev dependency tied to a project or uh, using MPX, which allows for the installation and the execution of AuditJS all in one line, as we've done here under the scan node script. AuditJS resolves the coordinates of the dependencies installed by NPM. Uh, and then submits them to IQ server, at which point it is evaluated against policy. AutoJS is going to return an exit code. Uh, so if you had set your policy to fail for certain things like critical security violations, uh, which this jQuery component will violate, uh, at that point it will spit out an exit code and the test script is going to fail because I have tied it, uh, or I've tied the invocation of the scan uh, to the test scripts. This allows an organization to enforce business rules surrounding the procurement of open source libraries in the same way that you would enforce functional unit tests and expose every developer working on the project to it. In the same way that you wouldn't accept something that's failing unit tests from uh, going into production, you wouldn't accept something with critical security issues or ban licenses from progressing in the SDLC either. This allows you to very quickly generate a software bill of materials that maps to what is installed by NPM in the node modules directory. That's what's going to be most relevant to the developer as they're going to be uh, managing and remediating things in the package JSON. Uh, that's going to differ from things like uh, individual files that might have implicated vulnerabilities brought in by a non-standard build process. Uh, that would be picked up by a fully scoped CLI or plugin scan that recursively goes through and hashes everything that uh, it finds in the workspace. This Jenkins job got kicked off automatically by the commit I made earlier, and it is running one of those uh, plugin scans that is recursively going through the entire directory. Uh, this is done with the Jenkins plugin as a post build step, uh, and additionally, it can be done through pipelines as well. Additionally, the CLI and the build automation plugins will pick up the commit hash, uh, which allows us to tie the report uh, to a certain commit within GitHub and GitLab source control management. In this case, the check failed because the jQuery that we added has a critical security violation and a direct link to the report is given. This is the fully scoped uh, recursive scan that goes through and identifies all the files within the workspace. Uh, and then additionally, it's going to group together uh, those file level implications based off of any package JSON files that it finds. 
At this point, we have a direct link to a software bill of materials associated with every Jenkins build job and every GitHub commit in order to track the state of your code base. Uh, one additional thing that happened in the background here was a pull request was automatically generated. There are actually two non-vulnerable versions of jQuery, uh, 340 and 341, but in this case, 341 was recommended by the remediation API because I had set an architectural policy to recommend 341 across the organization. If I decide to accept the changes, I can merge the PR into the master branch and that will update jQuery to 341 in the package JSON and any uh, automated processes based on commits will then kick off. Typically, however, these changes are going to require a bit more review than that. Uh, so in that case, to manage workflow, you can assign a developer to the PR or put the PR in a JIRA ticket already on the backlog uh, for an existing violation. Then from there, I'm going to pull down the changes that were made by the auto PR and run an NPM install to update uh, my local dependencies according to the new package JSON. After going through that whole process of blindly adding a dependency, uh, pushing it up before uh, running my tests, uh, then having the Jenkins builds kick off, fail, generate auto, auto PRs to fix the actual issue, and then all of the workflow management that was discussed, we can see uh, the real value of the developer facing integrations where the VS Code plugin is going to immediately show that you updated a dependency and it has a vulnerability as we see with the new jQuery line item on the left. Uh, and then additionally, if I had actually run my tests, I would have been immediately notified that I was adding something that would break a build down the line. As with any supply chain, it's important to catch these issues as early and often as possible uh, in order to save time and money spent refactoring or worse, expose yourself to risk that then cannot be easily remediated. As with the commit that we made earlier, uh, the auto PR automatically kicked off the Jenkins build, ran the scan, associated it with the most up-to-date commit in GitHub, and now we have the up-to-date uh, and non-vulnerable version of jQuery. Going back to our test script running, that includes the AutoJS scan, uh, we can see that this scan came back green, and all is right with the world again. Thanks for watching.